Everybody has somebody they know, whether it's themselves or a friend that has a mini horror story. And even as a fanboy myself, I'm no exception. This is my uh, horror story with the Mini Countryman as I tried to change the battery myself and ended up breaking stuff. So learn from my mistakes, watch this video, and don't do the same thing. So welcome to part two of this video. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out. I'll leave a link to it down in the description and up here as well. But let me tell you a quick synopsis of what happened. Um, I bricked my Mini, uh, my Countryman. And so what I did was I changed the battery because the battery was dying very quickly and was uh, having a little trouble starting. And so I just went to my local auto parts store because that is 10 minutes away, as opposed to my closest mini dealer, which is two hours away. And I got a different battery. And uh, that's where the issue arises. I swapped, successfully swapped it out and uh, registered it with the car. However, there's this uh, slight bug in uh, certain generations of minis uh, where the foot control module, when it loses power or it gets a power surge, basically just kind of bricks the boot partition of it and uh, therefore it doesn't boot up properly. And as a result, my car has no functioning windows, no functioning blinkers, and no functioning interior lights, um, which is Okay, uh, but if you get pulled over for not using your blinkers while driving it to the dealership to get it fixed, you can't even roll down your windows to talk to the officer. So yeah, um, we've got to get this fixed. And so in this video, uh, this is part two, I'm going to show you how I'm going to attempt, and let's hope it works, to get this uh, foot control module fixed. There is a, a warranty that Mini has uh, extended twice now on this uh, module. So it's now up to, I believe, 150,000 miles um, that this, this module is under warranty. So if this goes wrong in your car, um, definitely talk to your mini dealership because they should be able to replace it and should be under warranty as long as you weren't doing anything crazy like trying to code it or solder it yourself or something like that. But um, yeah, it used to be 125,000, now it's 150,000. This is me attempting to get that FPM module fixed. So I could take this to the dealership. Um, and get a fix, which would be my preferred method because it'd be under warranty, it'd be a warranty repair, it wouldn't cost me anything. However, the dealership is two hours away, um, so I can't just go drive there back and forth to have them diagnose it once and wait for the part and then drive back and get it fixed. So I called them and I talked to them and we discussed it. And I mean, they're trying to be helpful, but I don't think they're gonna be able to help me out in this situation because the earliest appointment they could get me in. And this, again, is just to diagnose and hopefully fix it in the one visit, but no guarantees, is um, a month away, literal, literally a month away from now. Um, and so if this were my only car, that would be like awful, totally unacceptable. Uh, luckily, I have the GP still, so I can drive that, but I do want to get this fixed sooner than a month because I have some plans that require me to use it. Um, so. I can't go with the dealer option on this fix. I would love to have waited for it, but in this, instead, um, my other option is to either try and repair the FPM module myself with uh, a XPROG device, which is an interface between your uh, computer and the module, which I think requires a Windows XP or 7 computer, which are in, in 2021 those are hard to find. You can probably find a Windows 7 computer, but an XP computer, not gonna be able to find that. That device also costs $200 and is shipping from overseas, so it's gonna take a while to get here. So that option two is probably out. Can't do the dealer, they're gonna take a month. Can't try and code it myself, which as much as I'd love to try and do, um, it's just gonna take too long for those parts to get here. There's an option three where there are companies that uh, specialize in, in fixing these computers or flashing these computers or updating these computers. So I found one based in California called Beamer Scan, and they were super uh, friendly and helpful on the phone. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my FPM module out of this Countryman, overnight it to them. They will fix it the same day and then send it back. I'm paying for the overnight shipping there and back. Um, and that will help me get the Countryman back on the road soon because I, like I said, I've got some events where I need it. Um, I've also looked into renting a car, but right now car rentals are hard to come by. Uh, the local rental place in my town is all out of cars. I don't, yeah, you know, one of the side effects of this pandemic that we've been in where they sold off a bunch of their inventory to make money and then also people are in, requesting them frequently now as people are traveling a little bit more. So anyways, I'm blabbering, I'm gonna get onto it. Let's go ahead and remove this FPM module. I'm gonna show you that. Then we're gonna overnight it, send it off to get it fixed. 
Um, I wish we could have fixed it ourselves, then we could have shown more steps, but again, that's just not possible in the time I have to get it fixed. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the foot well of the Countryman. Um, I'm doing this outside because I don't want to pull it in the garage and pull the foot well module, then this car is stuck in the garage and the GP's got to sleep outside, whatever. We're out here, we're outside, we're doing this. We're in the foot well. We got to remove some trim. We got our plastic pry tools. The module should be right under here underneath the driver's side. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We've got this uh, clip we got to pop right down in here first. Then we should be able to pull this molding off. One of those guys. Whew. A couple of clips. We got one clip to uh, for this wire to uh, for the uh, boot button. Take that out, move this trim out of the way. Now let's look. Here is what we're after. This unit right here. So let's go ahead and uh, remove this plug that we can easily get to on this side. Remove some bolts. Looks like maybe tens, I'm not sure. And then down there we'll have two more plugs. So let me get some uh, tools, we'll remove that. Okay, these appear to be a 10 mil. Very popular size on this car. Our control module, a little more free so that we can unplug the two connections. Uh, is that gonna show you? Yeah, we've got two connections here in the back. So let's go ahead and unplug those. And this car is officially a brick. There's one. There's the other one. There it is. That is what we're after. <sighs> so off to get this overnighted out to California to get uh, reflashed. Let's do it. Okay, so we're back. Um, we have the foot control module back. It just arrived today, back from California after being reprogrammed, uh, having its uh, OS flashed again. And uh, yeah, great service, Beamer Scan, uh, $150 to get this uh, fixed which I know uh, is a little pricey, but it's beat the alternative of waiting three weeks for my uh, closest dealer to be able to get me in. Why three weeks? I'm not sure why they're so far behind, but yeah, I couldn't wait three weeks. I have a lot of plans coming up, including a trip, uh, so that I need to have this car up and running. So that was my only option, send it out to Beamer Scan, get it reflashed with the newest software, and. Uh, now it's back here, let's go ahead and reinstall it and see if we can get this Countryman back to 100%. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Turns on. 
Oh! Windows. Windows work. Blinkers. Hazards work. Interior light works. We are back in business. Yes. Thank you for Beamer Scan for getting this corrected. So I hope you've learned from my mistakes in these in this last two videos. Um, just be a little bit uh, careful when you're changing the battery of your uh, R series minis. Uh, the foot control module doesn't like power surges or loss of power. Not always going to break, but there's definitely a chance. Um, luckily, we found a solution that fit with uh, within our needs. Yeah, a little pricey, but again, these are under warranty. So uh, make sure you check with your mini dealership. They've extended that warranty to like 150,000 miles. So check that first before you go and pay for this. But again, for my situation, the time constraints, I just needed it fixed uh, right away because of uh, where I, things I've got coming up and places I need to be to. And the three weeks uh, just wasn't gonna cut it for me. Why my dealership has a three week wait for any repair? Uh, well, I don't know, different story for different day. But anyways, yeah, the car is back up and running. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something uh, much like I have. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, when you're out there driving, you can see other minis like this freshly fixed mini countryman. Don't forget to wave. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Got some errands to run.